centuries ago, a glacier sliced off a piece of Ireland. I'm standing on that piece of Ireland, Clare Island, with a population of 150 people three miles off the coast of Ireland. It is a place where budding technology has taken off. I was inspired to do this episode of the Innovation Show. I'm here in Clare Island as part of my remit as one of the directors of National Broadband Ireland, where we roll out broadband to the remotest parts of Ireland. And I've just recorded an episode of the Innovation Show called Proximity with Kyan Krippendorf and Rob C. Walcott, where we talked about the moment of demand coming closer to the moment of supply. What does that mean in medicine, for example? It means that in remote areas, such as Clare Island, I can possibly 3D print medicine at the exact moment of that demand. I wanna to talk to an entrepreneur, a doctor here on the island, who's looking to close that gap, starting with the technology available today. He has brought proximity to Clare Island. In 1983, two things happened on Clare Island. The first was electricity came to the island and for those people who have been listening to the Innovation Show, you're sick of hearing about the fusion of innovations, that concept that it takes a bell curve to eventually bring a new technology. And there's always these laggards at the end of the bell curve. That wasn't the case on Clare Island. On Clare Island, people demanded electricity because they needed it. The second thing that happened in 1983 is today's guest was born. Welcome to the show, Ian McCaig. Thank you very much. You're very welcome to Clare Island. We, um, we have a long history of welcoming people in with good intentions. Absolutely. And Ian's family, seven of them here on the island as well. Spanning from Rory, the eldest, to Laura, the youngest. Um, we all are bound by this place. You know, it has that way about it to, to bring people home. That happened to me. Went away for a long time, went to the US for my studies and, you know, did all my college and then came home and was lucky enough to be here. And one of the things you're bringing to the island, I wanted to tie this together because the, I love the serendipity that happens on the Innovation Show. I've just done a show with Rob C. Walcott and Kyan Krippendorf from a book called Proximity. And one of the things we talked about in Proximity, for those who haven't heard it, was the idea of bringing the moment of demand right together to the moment of supply. So there's no waste. And one of the things we talked about on the Innovation Show was the idea of 3D printed medicine. So if you remember, F-16 fighter jets had to drop off medicine to remote parts, to armies, for example, in war-torn areas. Well, Ian is plugging the gap between the future that we talked about of 3D printed medicine under the moment of demand to where we are today with technology. I'd love you to share the story, what you're doing here on Clare Island. So here on Clare Island, um, I've been working as I'm a member of the School of Medicine in the University of Galway, um, and our research group is the Hive Lab. And what that stands for is Health Innovation by Engineering. And at its simplest term, it's about finding technology and finding a problem, kind of trying to put the two together to help people. Um, so for the past two years, we've been doing a research project on Clare Island, which is called the Home Health Project. And we're not taking, you know, the most cutting edge technology and putting, we're taking commonplace technology, but putting it to a new use. So we're, we're bringing in telemedicine, um, and t trialing a number of different approaches to telemedicine with the island population. So we've done things like remote monitoring, virtual consultations, um, long duration video calls to help combat loneliness, um, a, a variety of different things, all with the aim of seeing how this stuff that's become commonplace, you know, video conferencing calls, we do it every day, how it can be brought into healthcare and brought it in in a way that, that can affect like immediate change, not the potential change in the future, but doing it right now. One of the things we talked about on that episode was this concept that Rob and Kyan calls proximity. So it's this idea of bringing things together. And I thought it was so interesting, some of the applications, because when people see broadband being rolled out, they think about, yeah, that's great. I can now have connectivity. Perhaps I can do remote working, but proximity can save lives. And this is what one of the things you're bringing to Clare Island. One of the things is the something that a lot of people take for granted now is actually smart watches, fitness trackers, and you have 80% of the island now wearing Fitbits. That's right. Um, so 
you talk about the proximity and part of the problem is, you know, there's 150 people and there's three miles of ocean between us and not just the mainland, but, but also our doctor. Um, so we do try and use technology to bridge that gap. And the simplest thing we've done, which is perhaps, you know, one of the things that has bound us together the most is bring in the Fitbit and give everybody a step goal. Um, so we had 80% of the, uh, 80 people, which is 80% of the adult population on the island, uh, wearing our Fitbit for the past year. Um, and we've tracked 30 million steps on this island in the past six months, um, and provided individual goals to everyone. And it's all about raising their own awareness, but also giving them the kind of the comfortable, you know, relationship with technology that they need to build. You had Dr. Noreen with us last night. Noreen is over on Ackle Island. So she can't be here at the moment of need that we talked about, that moment of use that's needed. So she needs access to uploads of content. She needs to have perhaps an injury uploaded to the cloud, etc. This is the idea of this proximity that she needs to be able to see this to know, is she needed? Does she need to send the helicopter to bring people to the, to the hospital, etc.? Because that can be triaging somebody that doesn't need to go to the hospital because that's a pretty ominous journey to go over to the mainland that somebody may not want to go for something that's quite a routine visit. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and, you, you know, you, you can't ask our medical people to take a risk with somebody's life. But what we can try and do is give them more information to make better decisions. So part of our project is to provide some tools to help do that diagnosis better and to build out the connectivity because the connectivity is the key piece. You know, we can do it on our phones. We can send a picture. We can, we can describe something with words, but not if we can't communicate. So we've been trying to build on the connectivity we have to help people like Dr. Noreen to, you know, have a, a, a better understanding of what's going on. Um, so when the call needs to be made, if it is a call to say, call the helicopter or, you know, let's wait it out and see what happens in, in 12 hours. She can do that with more information. And like I said, it's simple stuff, but it's, it's really impactful. One of the last things I wanted to share was a few years ago. Now we had Dr. Robin Dunbar on the show and he's the guy who's famous for Dunbar's number of 150 people. We went down a rabbit hole talking about that earlier on. But one of the things he talked about in his book, Friends, is the importance of connectivity because we're social animals as human beings. We need connectivity, whether we want to admit that or not. We hide that behind, in, particularly in places like Ireland, behind the bar, drinking a little bit too much so we don't have to get too deep and share our emotions because yeah. we have a loneliness epidemic. And this surprises a lot of people about Ireland, but we have that and you uncovered that even here on the island. Yeah, loneliness in Ireland, our worst country in Europe for loneliness, unreal. Um, and loneliness just compounds everything that is wrong with the person, it makes their, their blood uh, pressure worse, it makes their arthritis more more painful, it makes everything worse. Um, and we have the technology now that we can, we can try and do little things. So that is something we did. Um, and we're really lucky to partner with Cisco and, and thanks to Brian Jordan and Cisco in particular for your support in this project. Uh, we've done this. We, we put a screen in a person's home and a screen in one of uh, a family member's home of that person. And they just turn on automatically and the two screens connect and it's just on for hours every day. Um, and you know, they get used to it and it feels like the person is in the room with them and they can have conversations. Not like you pick up the phone and you have, you know, a conversation and you say, oh, I meant to ask them something afterwards. <laughs> it's, it's casual. It's, it's constant interaction. Um, and so we'd like to pursue that for, you know, in larger scale. We'd like to do all this stuff on a larger scale and start building up these these solutions um, for this new digital Ireland that's coming within with the National Broadband Plan. It's going to be fascinating to see how this all pans out. I'm going to be an avid supporter and help in any way I can, which is why we're doing this as well. I hope many people out there reach out, find out more about your work and how you're going to make this into a prototype island for the future of telehealth. Dr. Ian McCabe, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me.